there was probably 40 or $50 million worth of cars on this lawn. I was going to the summer after my sophomore year of college. I was determined that I needed to finally get, you know, a car of my own. Uh, I had been using hand-me-downs for my family and yeah, while they were fantastic and I'm greatly appreciative of my parents for all that they have done for me, I really felt like I needed to have ownership of something. I needed to have something that I could call my own. So I was working somewhere between 70 and 75 hours a week on average. And through that, I was able to save up a little money and by the end of the summer, I had, you know, not excluding some other expenses, I had uh, you know, about three grand saved up, which isn't a lot, but it was more money than I had ever had in my life. So I felt pretty good about myself. Cruising around Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, uh, as it turns out, you can't get much for three grand, but what you can get is a surprisingly nice condition, bright red Triumph Spitfire. Happened to stumble upon it. It was in the middle of nowhere, Sugar Hill, New Hampshire. This British guy was selling it. He was you know, planning to move back to the UK with his wife. He just wanted to see it go to a good home. Looking through the pictures, it looked way nicer than it had any right being for my mediocre shoestring budget. You know, I was a little reserved, but I had hope for the Spitfire. It looked really nice. So I drove down there to look at it with my dad and my grandfather, which was cool. We had, you know, three generations of guys made this little road trip. And it was really fun. And we got there and this car is sitting on the side of this little tiny mountain road in the middle of nowhere. And it looked beautiful and small. Uh, when I'm standing next to it, it comes up to about my waist, which is kind of comical seeing me get in it. It's like a circus elephant in a clown car. The previous owner had had everything gone through and sorted out. So there was no rust in the frame. The interior was completely redone uh, and the engine ran like a clock. The owner took me on a little test drive and we came back and I was giddy. I was all in. I wanted this car more than anything. I mean, it was like a go-kart, but only slightly bigger. <laughs> so I didn't have obviously the money on me then. We had just drove down to look at it. So I drove home and finally, you know, conversing with my parents decided, all right, this is something I want to do. Went to the bank, took out, took out my money and Drove down there with my mom, actually. And I made sure it was with my mom because she had been the hardest sell. She was determined that I was gonna get something that would be practical. And she made it very clear to me that whatever I bought would be my daily driver while I was at school in Rhode Island, six hours away from home. And in my infinite wisdom, I thought, yeah, how bad can it be? Triumph Spitfire is a perfectly reasonable car to drive every single day, rain or shine, and occasionally snow. So we drive down, to New Hampshire, we you know, give the man his money and we trailer it back. Somehow that went completely uneventful. I have no idea how because the rear bumper was maybe four inches off the ground as we were towing it back. It worked, we got it back, it was still, you know, I'm around midday. And of course, we just got this new car. I'm over the moon excited, my little brother's home. We're gonna go take it for a drive. He and I jump in, he's uh, just a couple years younger than me. I have driven a manual car twice in my life and never has it been good. But you know, what's the worst that could happen? We're going, just me and my little brother. We started up and immediately realized we don't know how to put this car in reverse. On Triumph Spitfires, you have to lift up and go over. Had no idea. So as opposed, instead of getting it into reverse, we just uh, had my little brother hop out, push the car backwards, Away we go. We're driving down the road. It is awesome. I mean, it is a beautiful day, which happens about once in a year in Vermont. And you know, the sun is out. It's perfect. We're driving. We get about five miles from the house and it starts to sputter. I am panicking. I just spent all of my money on this car and it's dying. You know, it ran perfectly up to here. What did I just do? Oh my God, am I the biggest idiot in the entire world? So it dies right on the side of the road next to a corn, uh, soybean field. And my brother and I sit there for a minute like, what just happened? So we get out and uh, we look around, looking under the hood and we can't see anything wrong. We finally just were like, all right, well, we can't do anything. Call up my mom, say, hey mom, the car is stuck on the side of the road, it won't go. We're standing on the side of the road, take, pretending to take pictures and taking some pictures so that people won't think that we're idiots who broke down. My mom, obviously she's a fantastic parent. She jumps in her car, she starts to come get us. And while we're sitting there, my brother's like, did we check to see if it had gas? 
oh, it, it couldn't be that simple. Of course, we were so excited, hadn't even crossed our minds to think, is there any gas in this car? Naturally, there wasn't. It was completely bone dry empty. And so we called up mom again. She brought us some gas and you know, we started up. Runs fine, once again, no problems. I stuck true to my word and trailered it down to Rhode Island to use as my only car while I was there for an entire semester. We somehow made it all the way from Vermont to Rhode Island, five and a half hours without anything going wrong. We stop right outside this house that I'm renting in Rhode Island, go to unload the car and realize at some point in the last half hour, the strap that was holding the car down snapped and it is being held by an e-brake that is at best doubtful. So we thank our lucky stars that this car hadn't just gone flying off the trailer because it very easily could have. And we, you know, take it down off the trailer, pull it in the driveway, everything's fine. By this time we had figured out how to use reverse. So my parents suggest that hey, we should go out to this really nice restaurant uh, in Narragansett, Rhode Island. There's a bunch of great seafood restaurants in this really cute area right by the ocean. I'm like, oh cool, I'll drive the Spitfire there. Of, it's the perfect setting. It is a bunch of affluent neighborhoods and this beautiful seawall and this high-end restaurant. So we're gonna go out and it's gonna be awesome. So I'm driving the car. And one thing I hadn't taken into account is that I'm still not that good at driving a manual transmission. When I'm moving in, so is every other of the 13, 14,000 people who go to school there and all of their parents wanna take them out to a nice dinner also. It is standstill traffic and I am driving a car with which I am butchering the clutch. And all of a sudden I start to feel that the clutch is acting a little funny. I put my foot to the floor and then don't lift and the clutch starts to engage again. I'm like, uh, this is a bit strange. I'm not sure what's going on, but I know it's not good. And by the time I get to the restaurant, I mean, you can not stand still with the clutch depressed and in gear for more than five seconds. It will either die or start moving on you. So I'm freaking out. I mean, I'm in traffic this whole time. This is a very tensely populated area. So it was quite embarrassing. And my parents are sympathetic, but also along the lines of, you made your bed, time to lay in it, buddy. So we have a nice dinner and then I limp the car home and start to you know take it apart to inspect it and come to find out the master and the slave cylinder for the clutch are completely shot. They are the original 40 year old parts and definitely should have been replaced about as long ago as I was born. Uh, so ordered a couple new parts, it took a little while to get them but about a week later and I had Ubered to and from classes for a little bit so it wasn't exactly the start that I was hoping for but I had this car taken all apart in my driveway and I started the process of putting it back together. And I came into this project knowing that it was going to be something that I was going to have to work on and true to the expectations I had to work on it. But once I put that back together, bled the clutch, everything seemed to be perfectly fine. And it was for about another two months, um, went off without a hitch. Uh, the only other repair that I ended up having to do to it was replacing the starter. I was driving a 1978 Triumph Spitfire convertible around as my daily driver to and from campus every single day. And I was gratuitously driving through the middle of campus more than I needed to. Um, mostly because I mean, why not? There's not anybody else on campus who has something like that. And I ended up taking my girlfriend at the time to this Cars and Coffee event in Newport, Rhode Island, which is a ridiculously affluent neighborhood. Um, they have this event called Motors and Mansions on these lawns of the Newport Mansions, which are insane. So we, I roll up there in my $3,000 Triumph Spitfire, and I park right next to an Aston Martin DB3 and an American LaFrance race car from 1917 there was probably 40 or $50 million worth of cars on this lawn. And I pull up and just blend in with my little budget car. And it was ridiculous, um, but it was an awesome experience. We got to, you know, go around. I bought these little driving gloves because I'm so extra, it hurts. <laughs> I think girls like uh, something like that when it's not a crazy powerful car that is loud and obnoxious that, that guys like, but it's something that's small and cute and draws attention to them. And uh, you know, it makes people look at them and wonder who they are. I think women like that. And to be completely honest, I freaking like it too. <laughs>
I loved the way the Avalon King ceramic coating worked on my Porsche 993, so I was excited to try it out on my LP640. We put a clear bra on the car, but then on top of that, we put the ceramic coating to make it easier to clean. And after a 2,000 mile road trip, all the bugs just sprayed right off. It worked great on my car and you should try it on yours. So there's a link in the description below for a discount.